What's your favorite use of water? In Minnesota, water is all around us. From huge lakes to mighty rivers to tiny creeks, you are usually not far from water. I love water. I love to drink it. I love to swim in it. And I even love when it falls from the sky. Please put your answer in the chat. Even if this video isn't live, I always look through your comments later. So, how will you protect water? What are your super strengths? Hi all, my name is Seth Spencer and I'm an educator for Climate Generation, an organization based in Minneapolis that works with students, educators, and communities around the country to find solutions to climate change. This video will be about how water and the changing climate are connected. First of all, what is climate change and what's causing it? Climate change is a long-term change in our typical weather patterns. For example, climatologists or scientists who study the climate are seeing trends that Minnesota's climate is getting warmer and wetter. So what causes climate change? Climate change is mostly caused by humans burning stuff, especially coal and power plants to power our lives, like things for like Xboxes and TVs, and gas in vehicles to get us places. The good news is that there are alternatives to coal and gas, and we can turn the situation around. If you're not a huge fan of negative 20 degrees and so much snow, you might think, yay, climate change. But before we celebrate, let's take a closer look at what else warmer and wetter might mean to us because a warmer and wetter climate can set off a chain of reaction of many things. A warmer planet means warmer air and more evaporation. And since warmer air can hold more water, more intense storms and extreme weather are becoming the new normal. Some people call these intense storms rain bombs. Extreme thunderstorms can bring wind, hail, and a lot of water. Climate change is making these big thunderstorms more common in Minnesota, which can cause flooding, damage to farm crops, buildings, and animal habitats, as well as leading to water pollution. When the amount of water, land, and chemicals that goes into our rivers and lakes goes up, it can cause problems for us or things that like to swim in that water, such as fish, muskrats, or birds. So I've talked about problems or impacts, which is more in heavier rain, which can cause more erosion or land being washed away by water and more pollution in our water. So is there anything I and you can do about it? Well, yeah, because we are all climate action superheroes. We call these actions solutions to climate change impacts. And there are a lot of them out there. Remember when I said the main causes are that people are burning stuff, especially coal and gas? Well, yeah, so the solutions lie in us figuring out how to stop burning this stuff. You can ask your teacher to jump into some of these big solutions such as energy conservation or slowing down the burning of fossil fuels and switching to renewable energy such as solar and wind power or you can focus on solutions we all can do, such as using less electricity at home and at school, or biking or walking when it's safe to do so. It's now time to talk about how you will protect water. Hi, my name is Dawn Pape, and I'm with a nonprofit called We All Need Food and Water. In this next section, I want you to use your super strengths to strive to be below average. In greenhouse gas emissions, that is. <laughs> so where do we start? Let's start by looking at this pie chart made by the Union of Concerned Scientists showing the average American's greenhouse gas emissions. In other words, how average people like you and me are contributing to burning stuff. As I go through these things, please write down the things you can do. Let's start with the biggest slice of pie with the home energy. It's 32%. I'm going to start with the easiest things you can do 
and then continue to more complicated actions you might be able to take with help of your families. Did you know that Canada and the U.S. are the only two countries where clothes dryers are super popular? Sure, they have clothes dryers in other countries, but they aren't used as often. So, how do they dry their clothes? By hanging them up. You can do it indoors on drying racks or outdoors on clotheslines. Just not using your dryer will likely reduce your energy use by about 7 or 8 percent. Super easy. Another thing you can do to save a lot of energy is to use less hot water. Yep, that's right. Hot water uses a lot of energy to make it hot. Washing your clothes in cold or short showers and talk to your adults about using low flow shower heads. Another thing is unplugging stuff when it's not in use to avoid phantom use of energy or energy being used even in like standby modes. And consider having less screen time because together our digital footprints are larger than flying airplanes around the world. That's pretty huge. Maybe you can even help make sure that your home or your school is energy efficient by asking your adults to get an energy check from the power company called an energy audit to make sure there's no leaky windows, doors, or anything like that where energy is escaping. Another thing you can do is to write letters to city, state, and federal leaders about better building practices. It's totally possible to build houses and buildings so well that we don't even need any heating or air conditioning systems. It's called passive building and I encourage you to look into it. And while you're writing those letters, advocate for renewable energy like wind and geothermal and solar. So the next section of our pie is the stuff we buy. It takes a lot of energy to mine or grow the raw materials we need to make everything we wear and use. Of course, we need clothes and so many other things, but maybe we don't need so much. It's important to reduce first, then reuse whenever possible, and finally recycle it if it cannot be turned into something else. So before getting something new, ask yourself, do I really need it? Can it be borrowed, rented, or purchased secondhand? Are the materials it was made from renewable? How was it made? How far was it shipped? Can it be recycled? And when it's at its end of its life, recycle it so we don't have to take more resources from the earth. Moving right along, let's talk about transportation. Did you get my joke? Moving right along, transportation? Yeah, okay. Or how we travel. Can you bike, scooter, or walk to stores or school or other places you need to go? Encourage your adults to buy efficient cars. Also, while you're writing letters to those decision makers, encourage them to make policies, to make public transportation and electric cars a lot easier for people to use and to buy. The last slice of pie deals with the food we eat. The biggest thing kids can do to help the environment is to not waste food. Did you know about one third of the food produced in the world is never eaten? That's a total waste from beginning to end. I know you're probably not the boss of what you eat, but eating healthy food is generally healthier for the planet too. Whenever possible, opt for fresh food to reduce packaging. Try to eat locally grown food that reduces the miles your food needs to travel to get to you. And this might be a whole nother lesson, but the higher you eat on the food chain, the more energy it will take to make that food. 
So eating less meat can help reduce your carbon footprint. Eating organic whenever you can is also a good thing to minimize chemical fertilizers that pollute the air and the water. And have you ever heard of regenerative agriculture? If you said no, don't feel bad. Most adults don't know about this either. In short, it's using the soil to store excess carbon, which is really cool. Another thing you could do is try planting a garden and growing some of your own food. Microgreens and lettuces are fast growing and they can be grown inside your house on windowsills all year round. You don't even need an outdoor garden. How can you use your super strengths to help protect the climate, which will also help protect the water? Please write down at least one thing that you can do and tell someone about it and why you're going to do it. Rewatch this section if you need to and please feel free to reach out to Seth or me at any time. We would love to hear from you and what your class decides to do and we would love to help you make these solutions turn into actions. What are your super strengths and how will you use these strengths for good? Are you still watching? Awesome! You'll absolutely have to check out this website with the climate simulator where you can move around these sliders and figure out how to solve the climate crisis.